The tanks are here. Hey, it's Neil from Aviator. We got some exciting news today. The new fuel tank is finally here. It has been a long time coming and it's been a lot of work, but we finally have it. We have them available. They are here. If you own a Limitless currently, check your email. See if you've gotten an email from us to confirm your shipping address. Uh, we're sending the fuel tanks out for free, so all you got to do is cover shipping and we'll take care of you. Uh, if you've not heard from us, email store at aviatorppg.com and we'll get you all squared away. So what I want to do in this video is show you how to install your new fuel tank. It's pretty easy. Shouldn't take but uh, 10 minutes, something like that. Gonna need some Loctite, uh, some sort of razor blade, cutter, utility knife, whatever you got. Five millimeter Allen wrench, set of snips, some channel locks for fuel line clamps, torque wrench, bungee cord, and a fuel filter. Now, these new fuel tanks, they have a weighted uh, pickup at the bottom of the tank. It's much heavier than you know, the original um, fuel clunks that we used to call them, where it was just that little rock filter type of thing. So it's got a lot more weight to it, so it's gonna find the bottom of the tank a lot better. The downside is it doesn't have a filter in it, so you are gonna to need to add a, an inline filter somewhere. This one here is just something I had laying around the shop. It's got 3 16 barbs on it. You're gonna to wanna to put your new filter between the carburetor and the primer bulb, so I'll show you that in a bit. In order to make this job easier on yourself is if you got fuel remaining in your old fuel tank, is go ahead and drain that out. Easiest way to do it is a jiggle tube. If you've had Limitless with this older style tank, you probably already have this already. Got a little marble in here, so every time you shake it, it closes it off and pulls more fuel into it. Unscrew the cap. And one thing to remember to make this process easiest is the higher you have your paramotor, the easier it is to siphon it out. So we'll stick that jiggle tube in there, stick the other end down here in the fuel can. You can see it's much lower than the uh, fuel tank itself. And then you do exactly what it's called, you jiggle it. You see it come down, there we go. Just let the tube do the work. If you hear the marble rattling in there, you know it's working. Don't have to get all of it out, just get the bulk of it out just to make the job that much easier. Unattach this lower strap here. Your ground handling strap, you can leave that in place. This lower strap here is all you need to loosen up on the harness. Let's undo that. Another thing I recommend, if um, this is something you're kind of unfamiliar with, is go ahead and take pictures along the way of the complete motor as you're taking things apart. So you can reference that to put it back together. Do the other side. Grab your bungee because we're going to want to get the harness out of the way so we got access to the fuel tank. So just kind of lift up on it like this. Hook your bungee up here somewhere, up here. Go under the harness. Then on the upper spar here, this gets the harness up out of the way so you got easy access to your tank. So cut your fuel line right on top of the old barb here. And then, next step, these five millimeter bolts. One. There you go. Then we'll slide the old tank out. So we got our old tank right here, new tanks right here. We're gonna transfer your vent cap over to the new tank. We're also gonna take these clamps as well so you can use them on the new tank. You're gonna want a piece of uh, 3 16 fuel line. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the Tigon or whatever, it's just for the vent. Um, Cause good luck getting this piece off here. These barbs are pretty solid. Once the fuel line is on there, they don't come off. So grab your channel locks. Usually the easiest thing to do. Pop that one off, slide this one down for the vent cap. So you can pull the cap off like that. Now remove the clamps. All right, we're done with the old tank. You got the outlet side is the right side, left side is the vent. If you need to like look and verify just to remember, you can open up the tank and you can actually see down in there really well. 
where everything is. So you've got really good visibility inside the tank. One thing I will say, if you are the type of pilot that is gonna fill this tank to the brim, I would recommend running a really long piece of 316's fuel line all the way up to the top of the, somewhere along your frame or whatever, kind of behind your back, and then put the cap in the top of it. And what that'll do is, when you have this thing filled to the brim, that'll keep it from spilling out behind the harness and stuff like that. That's one thing that we ran into with the old tank is with this, uh, it's just a cap. It's not a check valve or anything. So if, it's, if that old tank was filled to the brim, it had a tendency to spill out of the vent. So if you run a fuel line all the way up, you know, two, three feet or whatever it is, that'll, that'll make a big difference. You won't have that problem anymore. But for this one, I'm just gonna set up a normal piece here, you know, three inches long, something like that. Slide this guy on the vent. Again, once it's on there, it's tough to come off. You really gotta, you pretty much just have to cut them. There we go. Something like that's fine. It's just the vent. It's not for letting fuel in. Take your clamp. Slide the smaller clamp on. Then put the vent cap on. Last step, slide this guy. Might need the channel locks to get it up over. There we go. It's in place. We're ready to put the new tank on your paramotor. We've got the filler neck on the left side. Put the filler neck in this triangle here. Now see how it's kind of sideways? What you're gonna need to do is push the tank in. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of push gets it right in there. It should slide in there no problem. It'll pop right in. Shouldn't have to force it very much. Just a little, just a little bit of persuasion will do the trick. Next step is going to be to put our bolts back in. Now these metal threaded inserts that are molded into the fuel tank itself, um, there's an undercut cut into them, and then the tank is molded around it. So it's super strong. It's good luck breaking that thing. It's it's really heavy duty. So what I recommend doing is kind of get them threaded you know, start with the bottom just get it threaded go to the next one there we go get the three of them threaded in and then you can do one at a time go back and thread lock everything throw a little blue loctite on there Last one. Okay. Now you want to take your torque wrench, set it to 12 newton meters, and tighten all three of these up, which I'll do now. 12. Okay. All right. Next step is gonna be attaching the fuel line to the fuel outlet. Remember this clamp here, you're gonna need this. Now this tank is a little bit taller. I'm gonna cut this fuel line a little bit better. See how that's kinda of angled? I wanna cut it flat. This is the one you wanna make sure is, there, that looks a lot better. This is the one you wanna make sure is seated all the way down on the barb. Those clamps on here clamps here slide that down there and there you go this tank, remember this tank is a little bit taller so you want to make sure that this fuel line isn't going to start kinking and stuff like that if if it's doing that you might have to trim the fuel line down a little bit or move your primer bulb up a little bit more than the other and we're going to need to add a fuel filter for this like i was saying the uh the new tank has a heavy um, metal pickup in the bottom of it so that's going to help it find the bottom of the tank as the fuel gets consumed down lower and lower. Downside is it's not a filter anymore so we got an added inline filter so I'll show you how to do that. This is a filter I had happened to have in the shop. Um, 3 16 barbs on the moster. This fuel line here going from the primer bulb to the carb is 3 16 um, 90 percent of the limitless from the primer bulb to the fuel tank is gonna be quarter inch, so we're gonna to wanna to use 
three sixteenths barbs um, fuel filter. This is just a cloth filter that I had laying around. Um, I, that's what I would recommend getting is a, like cloth or uh, or a center, centered metal kind. One of these smaller ones is the smaller the better. Uh, the big paper filters, it's I don't know, it just looks kind of weird. So I would run this one. If you look closely on all fuel filters, there's going to be a an arrow that shows the flow, just like a primer bulb. So make sure you've got that pointing in the right direction. So obviously on this one, where the fuel is flowing up to the carbs, so we're going to be pointed this way. Grab your snips. I would say probably in this general area would be just fine. So I'm going to cut about an inch out of the fuel line. And this one happens to come with uh, clamps with it. So I'll slide a clamp over here and here. Get them up out of the way so they're not impeding you putting it on. And again, double check, make sure the arrow's pointed the right way. I'm gonna slide this guy onto the fuel filter. Get a nice and seated like that all the way down. And then you're gonna need channel locks again probably to get this clamp over. this one same thing nice and seated all the way all right that's the install now we got to put the harness back together we're gonna go ahead and unhook the bungee strap make sure your harness is all unfurled and everything and this isn't like flung over the swing arms or something like that feed the strap Above the tank bracket here, you're going to loop it around once, like that, and kind of snug it up a little bit. I like to put the ground handling straps inside there, it gets the strap out of the way of the pockets or the reserve container. Snug it up a little, then loop it back in. You always want the Harness snug to the frame. You don't want it flim flamming around all over the place. And then we'll do a mirror image of the other side. Loop it through once. Snug it up some. Ground handling strap in. I want to discuss some of the features that we have with these two different versions of this new tank. Now the old tank, I'm sure you're well aware, um, it had good capacity with it, which was really nice, but the downside was the filler neck location. 99% of the Limitless that I built all have Mosers on them. So as you know, the filler neck was not ideal at all. And the weight distribution of it was not great. Everything was just, as the fuel went down, it was all just flat in the bottom of it. So with the new tank, you've got this side filler here, Nice and big, it has good threads on it. You know, the cross threading of this is going to be pretty tough to do. It just has a really good positive feel to it. You know, as we were showing you earlier, you can see way down in there. You got really good visual access to what's going on inside the fuel tank. You can look and see if you got a bunch of junk in there, all kinds of different things. So we got that. There's this channel here that you can literally fill this thing to the brim. In the back here, and now it's a little bit taller than the old fuel tank. As you can see, as it's sitting in the parent room, just a little bit, probably yeah, three inches, something like that. So this back here is scooped out to allow room for exhausts. So Cosmos 300 will fit on way better. This, it wouldn't even fit with this other tank. So 
it opens up that much more possibilities with your engine configurations. The back of it here, this, these angles here give you much better weight distribution. So the weight of the fuel is going to be more up and on your back rather than kind of down like a dirty diaper. And that's going to help bring all of that fuel down to the pickup. Like I was saying, the, uh, the pickup is a metal weighted piece. So that's going to work better to find the bottom of the tank and be able to suck every last drop out of this fuel tank. With this large tank, the 16 liter, it's true 16 liters, so you get a, about a liter more than the other tank. So for cross countries, it's a pretty good choice, to be honest with you. It's going to have, it's going to do really well. Now, the smaller version, the 8 liter tank, has a lot of the same features, same filler neck and everything, same, same cap, all that stuff. Uh, this would be a really good option for those with an Atom 80 that don't need 16 liters. I mean, your fuel burns probably three and a half liters an hour as it is. Um, if you're not one to be, you know you're not flying for two hours at a time or something like that, you don't need something like this, uh, that's where this would come into play. A little bit, a little bit cheaper if you wanted to buy it. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of good options, good weight distribution. It's all going to go down to the bottom here. Same fuel pickup as the other one, so you will need to add an inline filter. It's going to make the paramotor feel a lot lighter as well. This is a good option for smaller pilots. Another nice feature, if you look at the bottoms of these tanks, you don't have, this is more of an aerodynamic feature where that air that's coming up underneath you, underneath the harness and everything, you're going to get a lot more air to the prop tips in this general area there versus this, this one here that's just kind of flat and dull and blocks a lot of the air going to the prop tips. If you'll notice, there's no uh, leader markings on the sides of these tanks, so that gives you, the end user, the option to mark it however you want it. So if you want every half liter, every two liters, every liter, if you want it on the left side, if you want it on the right side, this is your blank canvas to mark this tank however you want to. Leave a comment down below if you would like us to do a decal or a PDF or something like that to take all the guesswork out of out of marking the leaders and if there's enough demand for it we'll do that. So there you have it. Uh, we went through all the features of the new tank. We went through installing it. So I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to make that process even easier. It's, it's a pretty easy job. Uh, I shouldn't have any trouble. As always you can email me if you're having questions or uh, any issues or whatever. All right, so that was the install of the brand new fuel tank. So if you're all set to go, go fly. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.